Hi, and welcome to our 109th test and measurement video. Today, we'll visit the very interesting XY mode in the Tektronix MDO 3000 series oscilloscope. In this mode, the oscilloscope displays frequency, phase, and amplitude relationships between the two signals applied to separate analog input channels. These Zhu patterns are displayed, and as one or both signals is modified, these patterns assume various forms that depend upon their relationships. Some writers contend that Lisa Zhu figures, while they make good backgrounds in science fiction movies, have no particular significance in the world of electronics. I emphatically disagree. With a little circuitry, you can construct a useful component tester that will reveal the condition of active and passive devices, such as capacitors, diodes, and other semiconductors. Wherever it is desirable to compare two frequencies or phases and cause them to coincide, the oscilloscope in XY mode is perfect. Piano tuners use the XY display in a specialized instrument to determine when the strings have been brought to the same pitch. By way of perspective, recall that the waveforms of oscillating electrical signals can be displayed in the time domain in the oscilloscope, one signal in each channel. One signal can be displayed and multiple signals can be shown simultaneously. It doesn't matter whether they are in sync or if they are of the same type. A square wave can be displayed alongside a sine wave. Each signal triggers independently at the user's discretion on a specified part of its own waveform, such as rising or falling edge. The XY mode, which generates Lisa Ju figures, requires only two channels, not more and not less. In fact, when you first acquire XY mode, channels 1 and 2 both activate by default. The way it works is that the signal of interest is applied to channel 1. The trace, rather than triggering on that waveform, triggers on the signal that is applied to channel 2. That signal is not displayed. It just furnishes the triggering information. You might think that the displayed waveform would be chaotic and unstable, but it is not, because the arbitrary function generator is providing two signals that are synchronized. To demonstrate Lisa Zhu figures, we have connected the Tektronix MDO 3000 series oscilloscope to a Tektronix AFG 31000 series arbitrary function generator. The hookup is simple. Just run a BNC cable from AFG channel 1 output to the oscilloscope analog channel 1 input and run a second BNC cable from AFG channel 2 output to the oscilloscope analog input. Turn on the oscilloscope and press the acquire button. At the right end of the horizontal acquisition menu, press XY display. In the ver vertical submenu, press the soft key associated with triggered XY. Notice that this activates the two required channels. Turn on the arbitrary function generator. The home page comes up and using the touch screen select basic. The output information for both AFG channels appears on the screen. To send the two signals to the oscilloscope Press the two channel on buttons just above the output ports. It is useful to toggle YT on. This shows the waveforms in the time domain in split screen format at the expense of shrinking the Lisa Zhu display. But that's not a real disadvantage because you can easily toggle the time display on or off to get a better look at the Lisa Zhu figure. Also, will turn the frequency to a more manageable 1 kilohertz, down from 1 megahertz.
pressing acquire, go back into XY mode. When two different frequencies are displayed in the two oscilloscope screens, one of them frequently will have lost triggering and become unstable so that autoset has to be pressed. The problem is that the waveform in the other channel is disrupted. To prevent this from happening, temporarily switch the waveform in the good channel off while you press autoset. Then turning it back on, both waveforms will be displayed correctly. Sine waves are now applied to channels 1 and 2 in the oscilloscope and they are shown in the lower part of the screen in the XY mode and in the upper part of the screen in the conventional time domain. We'll alter some waveform parameters in the two AFG channel outputs and see how the XY display in the oscilloscope responds. First, I'll double frequency in the AFG channel 1 output. Watch how the Lisa Zhu figure is affected. We'll change that frequency to 4 kHz. See how the Lisa Zhu figure is again changed. Now the ratio of the two sine waves in the time display and in the Lisa Zhu figure is apparent. You should be able to understand what is happening in the X and Y axes. Setting frequency back to 1 kHz in AFG channel 1 output. We'll see what happens when we change the phase angle between the two signals from 0 degrees to 90 degrees and then to 180 degrees. There is 90 degrees. And there is 180 degrees. See how the Lisa Zhu pattern is more eccentric. Also, turning the phase angle back to zero degrees will change amplitude. Shifting the signal in channel 1 to 2 volts, peak to peak. You can see the difference both in the time domain and in the Lisa Zhu figure. Boosting the amplitude further modifies these two traces. Of course, the three parameters can be changed simultaneously and in any combination. After a while, the Lisa Zhu figures can be recognized and even predicted, and this provides great insight into how waveforms of oscillating energy and even mathematical functions pass through their many transformations. Thanks for watching. New videos are added periodically, so check back frequently.